Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're gonna talk about ultra high voltage direct current. So let's dive right into it. Now first, if we are going into ultra high voltage DC, we have to understand what's the problem with AC, the system that we utilize currently. Well, power line itself is an energy loser. Now I'm not talking about a power loss that happens due to resistance that cannot be helped unless you start to utilize a super conductor so then what's the problem well problem is capacitance meaning you have a conductor that has switching magnetic fields meaning uh, basically current is going positive and negative positive and negative and that's how transformer works utilizing that magnetic field change that inherently creates capacitance losses meaning the cable is acting like a capacitor that you have to charge and discharge charge and discharge that loses significant amount of energy so longer the cable the more of the energy you will lose now that's not an issue in few kilometers the moment you start to extend uh, let's say 500 kilometer that's an issue 600 kilometer you are really uh, starting to have issues thousand kilometer good luck with that so that's the whole point the power line itself starts to become the energy consumer so power loss is very high on top of that on top of that uh, you also have to deal with what we call skin effect now skin effect simply translates to that if you have a conductor and you have a lot of energy going through it uh, it will create magnetic field like this no problem with that however it also creates what we call uh, eddy currents so these are small currents that are creating another magnetic field that will fight with this so consequence of that will happen the center will always remain empty and the outer skin quote unquote will carry the most of the charges so if you take the cross section and you came up the, that it should be able to carry let's say 50 amps the cable would barely able to carry 25 amps simply because the center part is unutilized now higher the frequency the worse this case so meaning in india the cable can carry more compared to usa simply because usa is at 60 hertz India is at 50 hertz so India would be a bit better so that uh, is an issue that people have to deal with and consequence of that you can look at all the power transmission line the moment you start to see big ones they will never have one conductor they will have two conductors four conductors this is a six conductor system and some other there are very huge there are like you know each conductor bundled as eight and like you have to understand like there is like six cable for one phase like why that's the reason skin effect so you cannot utilize a fat cable even if you create a fat cable insulate the hell out of it bury it underground it will simply not work because first center part will be 100 percent useless and uh, uh, the line capacitance will become even worse if you try to bury it or try to run it underground or under sea it will become very problematic so these two are very serious so capacitance and skin effect on top of that it also has ac system inherently has what we call active and reactive power so you can notice any transformer it's never uh, rated clearly as kilowatt it's always rated at like you know mva mega volt amps so it's rated as like you know active plus reactive power so inherently think of it this way like you have to send one megawatt of power you are spending energy just to send that one megawatt of power to the consumer through the transformer and all that jazz. so that inherently creates like the total energy loss is even more that's that's a, a side effect of ac system itself and you need three lines because we uh settled on three three is the best compromise one it will simply not you still need uh, one ground so if you had one more three you will have 60 percent more power so that's why we settled on three so you have three phases of the system that's a lot of conductor that you have to use to carry energy because like what, how do we think energy positive and negative but this puppy has three phases so you have to carry three connectors so that does add cost especially if you are making a new link and like you have to add three cables uh, for let's say 2000 kilometers that's a lot of expenditure that you have to deal with and not to mention you can't even use fat cables so why do we want to use direct current it has almost low to no capacitance loss now you have to understand if the voltage changes it still starts to behave like a, you know a changing magnetic field but generally uh, hvdc has such a low loss it's considered almost zero loss and it does allow because of that uh, low capacitance it does allow you to have undersea and underground uh, cables are possible so you do not have to spend boatload of money building of a sky system by the uh, rights of the land you can just bury the hell thing and especially if you want to deal with a uh, basically offshore wind farm that starts to exceed let's say 50 60 kilometers you're talking about like 80 kilometer uh, you know offshores you have to use this puppy otherwise ac cable will simply lose the energy before it even you know uh, reaches the ground and if you want to get a comparative understanding people will always say nah, hvdc's are 50 percent efficient what does that mean that simply means uh, there is three percent loss compared to six percent ac energy loss that happens over 1000 kilometer so if you have to go to 2000 kilometer you will have ludicrously high losses on ac system versus dc system and uh, much longer transmission before you uh, lose such a significant amount of energy that is no longer profitable that happens much further away so you can carry ludicrously 
ridiculously far. Like 2000 kilometer interlinks are normal in HVDC. Now again, not everybody builds that long, but it can be done. It's not like if you go to a HVDC designer, it's like, hey, I want a connection for 2000 kilometer. They're like, okay, that's a normal thing. Now, because of no uh, skin effect, you can use thick cable. Now, benefit of thick cable is that your insulation is directly proportional to the voltage you are using. So basically how thick your insulation is, that's right. If you are using 500 kV, uh, the insulation would be, let's say, 1 inch. If you are using 1000 kV, your insulation would be 3 inches. So let's say you want to keep your insulation cost low, especially for undersea cable. You have to do that. How would you do that? You will increase the ampere carrying capacity of the conductor. How can you do that? Make the cable fatter. It cannot be done in DC, uh, basically AC simply because the center would be useless. Here you can keep making it fatter as fat as you want. So it can be done. So you can utilize really thick cable, really helpful for uh, basically undersea system. And you can do that to only a single conductor. So this puppy does not even need two conductors if you want to design it that way. So you can have just one power line that is carrying the current. Uh, for undersea cable that's really really huge uh, energy saving so it utilizes negative terminal is basically return through the ground ground to ground basically earth acts as a returns conductor so not preferred system but people do that uh, because like again undersea cables are not cheap underground cables are also not cheap so sometimes people utilize that system so if you do not have boatload of money to have two conductors going uh, parallel you can utilize monopole configuration where you only have one conductor uh, that's comparatively uh, ludicrously cheap compared to three conductor system and ultra high voltage dc whenever you claim that ultra high voltage what does that mean that simply means anything above or at 800 kilovolts now why it's at 800 i do not have any idea because like to me it makes sense call that uh, ultra high voltage if it crosses thousand you know it makes clear sense oh it's like you know above thousand it's ultra but it's not it's like uh, ultra simply means at 800 kv or more so you have to understand what are the transformers that we utilize on this. Now you're like, wait a minute, we still utilize transformer on DC system? Well, yes, there is no other way of making the voltage. Let's say your generator is generating 2.5 kilovolts. You can't just go, let's make it 800 kilovolt. There is no way of doing that on DC. Only way to do that is utilizing transformer. So generators, all generators are mass, mass produced and manufactured in such a way that they have three phases. Okay, awesome. We know this, we manufacture this, we got this. So what happens is three to six phase happens. You're like, wait a minute, how the heck three are extra phases came? It did not. You shift two phases uh, in different directions so you will have three phases it will go into a transformer that transformer could have delta construction or y construction but in that transformer itself it will have two other cores one would be y configuration what would be delta configuration now if you do this you will have phase shift of 30 degrees so what does that mean that simply means you will end up with six phase that have 30 degree offset benefit it improves power factor so basically generator is also working uh, much calmly much reactively and uh, your harmonic distortion is also less so it's really good for everything heck we utilize this sort of technology in very advanced motor drivers if you have a very ex new elevator system there is a good chance it has that three to six phase system in the motor drivers so this is a much huge version of that so that's the whole point it improves power factor on both ends basically on the receiving end and on the transmitting it improves it so people generally like this idea of having six phase now that provides you 12 dc pulses basically if you have a bridge rectifier it gives you 12 dc pulses consequently it's like almost dc it's like almost dc at this point in time you don't even need huge capacitors and ludicrously huge inductors to stabilize that so that's awesome now whenever you type let's say hvdc uh, transformer you'll always find something weird like this where it has two prongs coming out you're like what the hell are those like first thing you may think hey are those dc well no this is just the transformer ac in ac out it does not have uh, you know a converter inside it so what the hell is happening here it took me time but turns out this is a single phase transformer because these puppies are huge as in like uh, made for uh, china's hvdc link which was transmitting 12 gigawatt of power let that sink in 12 gigawatt there is no single transformer that can handle that kind of power so they uh, divided the system in 500 megawatt transformers so this is a single phase 500 megawatt transformer so it receives the generator input here and then phase shifts so creators two phases out of that now you will utilize three of these transformer you may have four transformer because like you know in case of one going down you can replace that transformer so that's why it has two huge prongs coming out just like i was always confused like why the heck this had two prongs because this is a single phase transformer not a triple phase transformer transformer now triple phase transformers are used if you are talking about like 30 megawatt or 40 megawatt systems nowadays like especially for huge power systems generally people go with single phase system so do not be confused like why the heck it's two prong coming out it takes one low voltage single phase makes it two ultra high voltage single phase like this is from siemens that is like around 1200 kv so that's how we make this now be mindful this puppy is bi-directional meaning that it is expected to pump energy on the other way also that's the only converter you're not gonna have like a two different converters like this is uh, bi-directional 
So that's the transformer side of it, and that's why, just to get that smooth DC, we utilize this puppy. Then we come to converter station. Well, at this point in time, everything I talked about D HVDC actually makes it cheaper. Basically, you only need to use one conductor. Awesome. You can use fatter conductor. Super awesome. You can travel much farther distance. Ultra awesome. You can have lower losses. More profit. Everything is epic. Until you touch this puppy. The moment you go to converter station, the end, your budget is like poof, gone. So this puppy is very expensive. And it has to convert AC to DC and DC to AC. This is a two-way system. You have to be very mindful of that. Now, not all interconnect would be designed in such a way, but generally they are built in such a way, like every manufacturer will build in such a way that it can act both ways. So you can utilize this as a like you know transfer. Basically, let's say one substation is like producing too much, it dumps into the system that is producing very little, and then it you know borrow borrow back the power. So you will not have two converter stations for in one for input, one for output. There will always be one. So converter stations are ludicrously expensive. Now we used to have this in 1905, uh, generally utilizing mercury vapor systems. Those were ludicrously expensive ludicrously unstable and not really that good but they did prove the concept and if you keep hearing abb keep talking about it's like we had this technology for 50 70 years that's what they are talking about like in the very old days we used to have mercury vapor then uh, solid state came to be like thyristor valves now thyristor valves are awesome they do work they started to being utilized in 1977 yes these technologies are old uh, in 1977 however they do have one severe side effect they need active load meaning uh, wherever you are dumping power must have an active ac grid utilizing that ac grid it will trigger on these things basically uh, thyristor can be turned on now you were like okay thyristor can be turned on then how the heck you turn it off you don't that's the problem with this thing that's why it needs a grid so the moment grid goes to zero connect that forces these valve close basically you are uh, from the load side you are forcing it close you're giving the on signal utilizing the other system but off signal you cannot give it off signal there is no port for it off signal so it kind of collapses it basically the grid collapses is the output side of this puppy so it always needed that uh, basically active grid so if you had a scenario where let's say you have hvdc link sending both load of power but the main grid that is on the receiver end goes down this uh, thyristor valve will stop working or it would need on-site generator to trigger it so something like that basically that is creating three-phase system now, uh, to solve that kind of issue, you have to understand these things have to work at ludicrously high voltage, as in like 100 kV, 500 kV, 1000 uh, kV, so 1200 kV, like in Siemens case. So those are ludicrously difficult to deal. So after the development of silicon industry, we reached voltage source converter, which is the current technology that is utilized. So if you go to any company now, that's what they're going to sell you, voltage source converters. And that started to hit market in uh, 1997. Now VSC. Now this puppy is just a basic inverter. Now be very mindful, I'm talking about the concept, not the thing. The thing is huge. But the concept with this puppy is that it does not need like you know other trigger factor. It can trigger itself, meaning as in like on and off. Benefit of this puppy is that it can pump a power into an off system. Meaning, let's say you have an interconnect between two countries and the grid goes down, and you want to send power in there, you can do that. You do not need that uh, you know grid to add more power to it. So it can not only work in like you know add addition mode where you are adding more power to the system. It can also become the only carrier because of that voltage source converter, and they are a bit more efficient also. Now, the main reason why they are like huge, as in like this is a tiny person, this is a huge stuff, is like simply because it has to handle high voltage directly. Like we, uh, most of Indians uh, home, we have what we call inverters. We have basically 12 volt system that goes into in, uh, inverter unit, it becomes 12 volt AC, then it goes to transformer. Here it's inverted like that. It's like outside uh, that uh, basically 12 volt system, uh, basically outside of the AC system, we have to convert the uh, you know AC to DC. So all these things have to handle very high voltage. And this is the most expensive part of HBDC. At this point in time, like that's why I'm saying, like, not, why the heck everybody is not doing it if it's like you know it's so awesome? Simply because of converter stations are ludicrously expensive, and uh, the it also has a weak link simply because there are only few company that knows how to make this uh, you know caliber of equipment. As in ABB is the world leader at this point in time. Siemens is second best. Uh, Amstrad. I could not even found another manufacturer that you can go to and be like, hey, uh, do you build a you know, one gigawatt power transmission system? They're like, lol, no. Like Siemens can say that, like they have built a 12 gigawatt system. In India, there is eight gigawatt system. So we have many systems that are reaching gigawatt like there is no tomorrow, but there are only three manufacturers that can handle this kind of converter stations. Transformer, you can go to any Tom, Dick and Harry, they can build that. It would be annoying, but they can build it. But uh, the moment you go to converter station, people are like, lol. So that's the whole thing that we have to understand this. Voltage source converters are ludicrously expensive. 
so what we can expect in the future well this is a must have requirement for renewable energy now oh, like wait a minute why the heck grid has to deal with that well think of it this way india has a grid that is quote unquote interconnected but it's mostly interconnected for stability reason it's not interconnected with like let's say in rajasthan this is like a desert area you have put yolo amounts of solar panel but what will happen if this area rajasthan itself starts to consume less power than the solar farm they have to curtail power meaning they have to shut it off and that's a waste of money and resources and everything so uh, you may be like energy storage but wouldn't it be better if you can just dump it during the daytime when let's say dump it in south india now ac link cannot go from here to here only dc links can go that far and that's why like india already have many um, dc links like these links are from abb the other companies even also have already made uh, many dc links like you have one dc link that is 500 kb and uh, 1.5 gigawatt uh, 1.5 gigawatt same 500 kb uh, 70 kb 500 megawatt that's like very small and then we have power rating of 500 megawatts uh, 176 kb and then we have gg link that is northeast agra link that is 8 gigawatt and be mindful at this point of time when i'm making this video apparently this is the world's only interlink meaning it connects more than one point it's not like a to b b to c it's like a b c it has three links so that's the whole point and uh, this will play a very critical role because that allows lot of people to dump a lot of energy into one centralized location quote unquote centralized and this system can absorb a lot of energy meaning you can have gg amounts of solar farm gg amounts of wind farm and it, it never needs to curtail it's like the whole india is connected you can always find oh this state is consuming a lot of power send the extra there you want that you always want that that's why this svdc system is a very critical requirement for renewable so not only it can solve the distance issue you can have like you know power plants hydro dam there like that's that's huge as hydro dam same happens in china also like they have a huge as hydro dam but it's very far away so they need to build uh hvdc link so this will play a very critical role in green grid like whenever you talk about european uh, unions plan to have global grid that's what they are talking about like everything would be connected via hvdc there is even one plan i do not know how true it is it's like they're gonna put huge solar farm in basically australia and then just send the power through the sea that can only be done with hvdc so right now hvdc systems most planets uh, most things in the planet is just like you know link one to link b but we're gonna go from backbone system to interlink system like how india started with this and whole world needs this be very mindful this is not a technology oh only india needs it or china needs it no. every tom dick and harry needs this like think of it this way like imagine it this way like entirety of world grid is wasting six percent of energy just for long uh, if you can take that six percent and be like hey how about you only waste three percent of that lot of energy saved so everybody needs this however there are two major hurdles with this puppy one is cheaper converter which i can see coming down in price because like you know as uh, more and more mass production units uh, it's like you know more demand will lead to mass production which should lead to lower cost and then we have to come to uh, come to the main conclusion dc breakers are very weirdly limiting factor at this point in time so that's why we cannot go to 200 000 volts somebody has actually built a ac system that goes that ludicrously high but uh, it should call to be ludicrously high but you get the point like we cannot make dc electric circuit because if you have uh, like if you look at ac circuit breakers they are like this and when you break the circuit it's like done now you're like why the heck electricity stopped electricity is stopped because the voltage went to zero crossing the moment zero crossing happens the arc self extinguishes meaning it will no longer continue itself so all you have to do is do this very fast awesome difficult but can be done what about dc nothing will happen it will just create an arc continuously why because there is no zero crossing so you cannot utilize normal circuit breakers for this there is like solid state circuit breakers have to be used and it's very expensive very convoluted and complicated also so right now that's also a limiting factor that's why we cannot go ludicrously high voltage like dc like you ask anyone who deals with solar farms especially large solar farm they're like they will show you two conductors uh, like normal low voltage as in like 150 volts they'll uh, connect the cable and it's like open it so there will be arc it will be continuous arc it can melt through metal that's the whole problem with dc stopping dc current is very difficult so dc circuit breakers have to be improved a lot before every tom dick and harry starts to utilize that and i mean you can notice that even in solar farms like ac circuit breaker uh, ten dollars uh, dc circuit breakers one hundred dollars like why that's the whole point dc is the limiting factor so this was my presentation on ultra high voltage dc systems hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friend that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me extra disappointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching